Welcome to Electron Line. Now the second postulate that Einstein came up with, and probably the most crucial one for special relativity, is the fact that he realized that the speed of light was a constant. And let me explain what we mean by that. So, in special terms, we could say, as measured in any inertial reference frame, light propagates through space with velocity c, independent of the motion of the source. So, what we're normally used to in our daily life, and this is what we'd call classical mechanics, let's say somebody's driving his fancy car, and he opens up the window and takes a baseball, and while the car is driving at 10 meters per second, he's throwing the baseball out forward at 10 meters per second relative to the car. And down the road, there's an observer. The observer sees the baseball approaching, and sees the baseball approaching at 20 meters per second. So the baseball is moving at 10 meters per second relative to the car, but is moving at 20 meters per second relative to an observer who's stationary on the road in front of the car. Hopefully not right in the path of the car so it doesn't get run over. So that's what we're used to. So we see velocities adding. It's the principle of adding of velocities when one is relative to the other. But in space, Einstein said that's not the case. So let's say, using special relativity, we have a person that's traveling a very fast spaceship. Spaceship is traveling at 0.9% of the speed of light, or I should say 0.9 times the speed of light, which is 90% of the speed of light. And he gets bored, he climbs out of the space, spaceship, he's got his spacesuit on, sits on top of the spaceship, has a flashlight with him, turns on the flashlight. So we know that the light will emanate from the flashlight at the speed of light v equals to c. Now, as an observer, in some near, standing on top of some nearby planet, watching this whole event unfold, what is the speed of the light as the light approaches this observer? Now, most people would say, well, we simply, just like we did here, add the velocities, so c plus 0.9c would be 1.9c, so this observer should see the speed of light approaching him at, or her, at 1.9 times the speed of light. Einstein said, that's not possible. This observer will see the speed of light coming towards him or her, also at the speed of light, irregardless of what the source is doing. So, this observer sees the light coming at him or her at the speed of light c. By the way, c is about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, which is 186,000 miles per second, or 300,000 kilometers per second. Wow, that was kind of really strange when you thought about it. How can that be? How can this not hold to the same laws of physics as that? But it turns out that space is something special and as light travels through it, it is limited to that specific velocity of light. It has to do with the permittivity and permeability of free space. Just like Maxwell calculated that speed to be equal to that and the speed of light, according to Maxwell, was determined to be equal to 1 over the square root of the permeability and the permittivity of free space. So, keeping that in mind, Einstein said, hmm, I believe that this observer will see the light coming at him at the speed of light. Now, that will set up a whole chain of events, a whole chain of reactions in terms of equations that then need to be, de need to be developed in order to explain what we actually observe in speed when things begin to move near the speed of light, like this spaceship right here. Now, of course, in real life, we don't have these spaceships quite this fast, but there's lots of things that move quite fast and near the speed of light, and when we start observing those in the laboratory, we begin to see that, yes, things begin to act kind of strangely because they have to hold to this principle that every observer will see the speed of light regardless of what the source is doing, and that speed of light will always be the constant, the speed of light. Well, that was the first part of this postulate. We're going to take another look at the very same postulate from a different perspective, and it even becomes a little more crazy and a little bit more complicated. So, that's how we understood, or at least that's how Einstein understood what was happening in space, and sure enough, he was correct. He proved himself later on, and then, of course, this will then turn out into all the equations and then describe special relativity in the future, which we'll cover here in this video series.